Hello everyone. Today our topic is mycorrhiza. The term mycorrhiza was coined by a German forest pathologist A. B. Frank in the year 1885. You all know that mycorrhiza is a symbiotic association between fungus and roots of higher plants. The word fungus comes from a greek word mycus and rhizo meaning root so when a fungus associates with the roots then it becomes mycorrhiza and in common parlance we see mycorrhiza as a symbiotic association between fungus and roots of higher plants only now this is a mutualistic relationship where both the partners benefit each other more than 95% of plant species have mycorrhizal associations there are different types of mycorrhiza we will see them here in this lecture so what is there in the soil we can't see with our naked eye we only see the plant above ground parts so for a plant it is the root system but in addition to the root system we know that soil is the habitat of diverse group of microflora or microfauna and here among the microorganisms bacteria are the dominating ones then comes actinomycetes then comes fungi and fungi have thread like bodies these thread like structures are called as mycelia and part of mycelia is called as hypha in plural hyphae so uh, we can imagine that in the soil there is a huge network a vast network of fungal mycelium so in any agricultural land we can imagine that below the ground there is a vast spread of fungal mycelium and it will obviously look like this or even more dense than what it is shown here okay now what are the types of mycorrhiza there are many basically we have endomycorrhiza and ectomycorrhiza and others are all derivatives of ecto or endomycorrhiza so first is endomycorrhiza then ectomycorrhiza ectoendomycorrhiza ericoid mycorrhiza arbutoid mycorrhiza monotropoid mycorrhiza orchid mycorrhiza first let us talk about endomycorrhiza endomycorrhiza was earlier called as vam vesicular arbuscular mycorrhiza now they are called as arbuscular mycorrhiza or am more than 90% of vascular plants of the world flora form endomycorrhiza this mycorrhiza was earlier named as vam because vesicles and arbuscles these two modified structures are produced by the fungi in association with the roots of higher plants and these modified structures vesicles and arbuscles are produced inside the root cells inside the root cells of the plant where they are forming association so they were called as vam now these vesicles these vesicles are basically the storage organs for the fungi and arbuscles function as absorptive organs it functions similar to hostoria through arbuscles that the fungi derive nutrients from the root cells now all the endomycorrhizal fungi do not form vesicles but they form hostoria or 
our vesicles because our vesicles are the essential parts of a fungus through which it derives nutrients from the host so formation of our vesicle is a must for endomycorrhiza so since all the endomycorrhizal fungi form our vesicles now endomycorrhizal fungi are also known as our vascular mycorrhiza here we have some examples of fungi that form endomycorrhiza like glomus gigaspora and acolospora now what happens inside the root cells see here we have epidermal cell layer epidermis of the root okay then this is the entry point of the fungus fungus which is present in the soil from the rhizosphere it comes to the root surface and then it enters it enters and then it penetrates further to hypodermis then to cortex region and the fungal mycelium spreads all over in all directions and this fungal hypha penetrates the cortex and hypha enters the root cell hypha goes inside the root cell okay hypha goes inside the root cell hypha can also remain intercellular here between two cells the space between two cells hypha can also enter the root cells now it spreads intercellularly and also intracellularly and it forms vesicles which are the storage organs and our vesicles which are the absorptive organs or hostoria through which the fungi derive nutrients from the root cells through hostoria or our vesicles now here the endomycorrhizal fungi enter the root and spread in the root cortex both intercellularly and intracellularly produce vesicle and our vesicles vesicle formation is not must for all but our vesicle formation is must for all mycorrhizal fungi all right now ectomycorrhiza only 5% of vascular plants develop ectomycorrhiza in the plants belonging to the families pinaceae fagaceae and betulaceae in this type of mycorrhizal association fungi remain outside the root surface mostly fungal mycelia form a compact and multi-layered covering on the root surface and it is called as mantle that prevents direct contact of root tissue with rhizosphere and the fungi which form ectomycorrhiza also enter the root cortex and form a network of mycelia in the root cortex but do not enter the cells mycelia do not become intracellular mycelia are only intercellular okay now this network of mycelia in the root cortex is known as hartignet these fungi remain in the intercellular space and never enter the root cells and this ectomycorrhizal fungi also do not form vesicle or arbuscles so the fungi which are responsible for formation of ectomycorrhiza are boletus edulis rusula species rhizopogon species pisolitha species etc now in this picture you can see formation of ectomycorrhizal association in angiosperm and here in gymnosperm in angiosperm we can see here external hypha okay this is the root here also root we have external hypha here external hypha and we have this is epidermis epidermal layer epidermal cell epidermal cell and just outside the epidermal layer we have a thick mat of fungal hyphae thick mat of fungal hyphae and this 
mat of fungal hyphae a thick layer of fungal hyphae is known as mantle then we have intercellular presence of fungal hyphae we have epidermal cell here epidermal cell here and then we have space between two cells and this is filled by fungal hyphae and in angiosperm this is your hertig net hertig net in case of pine uh, this is your mantle very thin layer of mantle and fungal hyphae enter intercellularly and occupy the intercellular space forming a network of hypha and this is your hertig net okay network of hypha but never enters the root cell never enters the root cell remain in the intercellular space so this is hypodermis cortex so fungal hyphae enter the cortex forming the hertig net and outside the root surface makes mantle or a thick layer of fungal hyphae now this thick layer of fungal hyphae prevents the root surface to be to remain in direct contact with the rhizosphere so rhizosphere soil and the root surface they are not in direct contact there is an interface here and it is fungal mantle ectomycorrhizal mantle so any harmful pathogen occurring in the rhizosphere will find it difficult to access the root surface and will find it difficult to penetrate the thick layer of mantle and then access to root surface to cause any disease especially it is true for nematodes nematodes which have a sucking type of uh, behavior it penetrates the stylet in the root cell and then it sucks nutrients from the root but because of presence of mantle thick layer of fungal hyphae that the nematodes cannot access the root cells so nematode attack can be prevented by formation of ectomycorrhiza in the root system so this is one benefit of having ectomycorrhizal mantle now we can compare ectomycorrhiza and endomycorrhiza in this diagram so in the left hand side we have ectomycorrhiza in the right hand side am or arbascular mycorrhiza or endomycorrhiza so in ectomycorrhiza as we have said just now so we have fungal mycelium this is the rhizosphere rhizosphere region and it forms the fungal mycelium forms a thick layer of fungal mat this is your mantle and the fungal hypha also enter the root intercellularly and occupies the intercellular space and it is your hertig net all right so mantle and hertig net no vesicle no arbuscle whereas in case of am or endomycorrhiza we have presence of mycelium in the rhizosphere it enters the root then it penetrates the root cortex remain in the root intercellularly as well as intracellularly produces vesicle and arbuscle so here only arbuscle has been shown arbuscles are the sucking organs or absorption organs so these are like hostoria so this is mainly the difference between ectomycorrhiza and endomycorrhiza in brief so to elaborate the differences between ecto and endomycorrhiza we have uh, some points here occurrence endomycorrhiza occurs in more than 90% of the cases and ectomycorrhiza occurs in less than uh, about 4% or so cases penetration fungal hyphae penetrate cortical cells of root inter and intracellular presence can be seen ectomycorrhiza they don't penetrate the root cells they are only intercellular or extracellular fungal structures formed for endomycorrhiza vesicle and arbuscle for ectomycorrhiza hyphal sheath or mantle mantle is also known as hyphal sheath and hertig net okay 
Now sheath is formed in the root surface and hardig nate is formed in the root cortex. Now which fungi form the endomycorrhiza? The fungi which belong to glomeromycota group, they form endomycorrhiza. And the fungi which belong to basidiomycota, ascomycota and zygomycota, some of them are ectomycorrhizal. Plants involved. Endomycorrhiza are found in most vascular plants including orchid, shrub, foliage plants, trees. But ectomycorrhiza are found mostly in woody plants, okay, beech, eucalyptus, oak, pine, etc. Culturability. Endomycorrhiza cannot be cultured on artificial media. So this fungi cannot be cultured on artificial media. Whereas ectomycorrhiza can be cultured on artificial media. So you can isolate them in the lab and grow them and multiply them. Morphological changes in the root. Endomycorrhiza does not cause morphological changes in the root. But ectomycorrhiza cause morphological changes in the root because they form hyphal sheath or mantle which increases the thickness of the root, root hair. There are other types of mycorrhiza like ectoendomycorrhiza. Here we have qualities of both ecto and endomycorrhiza but we have less developed mantle. Okay, Otherwise the fungi will be um, forming mantle but also they will enter the root and form vesicle or arbuscle. Ericoid mycorrhiza. These are found in the plants of tribe Ericoidae of family Ericaceae. For example, uh, fungi, Pezizella, Claveria. So these are the fungi which form uh, mycorrhizal association with plants of Ericoidae tribe. Arbutoid mycorrhiza. These are found in the plants of tribe Arbutoidae of family Ericaceae. Monotropoid mycorrhiza. These are found in the plants of the family Monotropaceae. Orchid mycorrhiza. In the nature, orchids germinate only with endomycorrhizal fungi. For example, Ceratobacidium, Sebacina, Tulosnella. These are the fungi which help orchid to germinate. Now, what are the benefits of mycorrhiza give to plant? Nutrient uptake and translocation. Fungal mycelia are thin, thread-like and can be very long. And so, can be spread to places away from rhizosphere, much away from rhizosphere. So, since the fungal mycelium is very thin, they have high surface to volume ratio. So, they have high absorptive surface. Okay. So, they increase the absorptive surface of the root. They increase the uptake of water and nutrient. When there is no enough moisture in the soil, the fungal mycelia can bring water and minerals from far off places because the mycelia are distributed to far off places. Ectomycorrhizal fungi translocate phosphorus, nitrogen, calcium and amino acids. Okay. So phosphorus nutrition is very important as far as mycorrhizal benefits to plant is concerned. Increased translocation of zinc, sodium and other minerals then transfer of metabolites from host to fungal symbiont and other plants. Production of growth hormone and antibiotics. Protection of plants. Mycorrhiza make plant drought and frost resistant. They increase tolerance to stress against soil temperature, toxins, high acidity, heavy metal toxicity. Then fungal mantle acts as passive mechanical barrier for root pathogens like nematodes. So these are the benefits that a host plant gets from mycorrhiza. That may be the reason why most of the plants, more than 95% of the plants have mycorrhizal association. So with this, the present lecture ends here. If you have any query, please write to me in the comment box. Thank you very much.